are, Rob. Uh, welcome to Winnipeg. Welcome to uh, Investigate's Retrospectives for the first time. All right, on. it's great to be here and it's good to be in Winnipeg. It's good to have you mm -hmm. here. Um, I was thinking uh, about when you joined APTN. Mm -hmm. uh, you were already in television for a while and you had a partner, Shirley McLean, mm -hmm. and the two of you came over as a set. Yeah, yeah, we were, uh, we were uh, a pretty strong team. Uh, uh, we hit the ground running, definitely, and, and, and BC, was, uh, our, BC was our beat. And, um, yeah, we were kind of called the we were called the BC uh, SWAT team at that time. I think by <laughs> Rita Deverall gave us gave us that name, and uh, Todd was there still to help help us transition. So the three of us, uh, you know, for a few months at least before Todd moved here, were, were um, um, doing some uh, great work together. It was it was a lot of fun when I first moved over. Yeah, but we make it sound like it's not fun now. <laughs> it's more it's fun always, now. It's always fun. It's always been fun. Yeah, and, and challenging and. and yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a job that really, really pushes you, so. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I know, like, you also, it was interesting, because you were a shooter to editor at that point. Mm -hmm. Well, you were kind of like a VJ, too, because you were shooting and editing uh, for Shirley, but then you were also VJing your own stories on the side. Like, you guys were really like a, like a machine, the two of you. Yeah, I, I was hired at uh, APTN National News as a VJ, doing my stories, and I shot and edited for Shirley, Prior to that, on a uh, show called uh, uh, First Story, um, I was a producer. Uh, I, I, I directed uh, documentaries uh, for about three or four years at that at that place. And prior to that, up in the north, we put, worked on a, a show called uh, NADA for 11 years, and uh, that was a one-hour weekly. Uh, that was a kind of a news magazine, northern news magazine show that allowed us to uh, stretch out and do hour-long docs. So uh, that's kind of... Uh, my roots, that's where I came from. Well, you, you come into uh, APTN at a good time too, because we've had, we, we'd had this great leader, mm -hmm. Dan David, which you've probably met for the second time now, yeah. maybe more. Yeah, Yeah. because I think he sometimes shows up at events that you've covered, so you've met him there too, but he's been back um, to like APTN to, to train and to mentor a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And uh, he left, and we were, we were just talking before the show, like it felt like it was like a year before we had another news director, but it wasn't really that long. Um, I think it was really only a couple months. Mm -hmm. But we got uh, Rita Deverell in, mm -hmm. and she was the one that hired you. Yes. So, so Rita was the only non-native uh, news director ever at APTN. Right, right, and she uh, she was great uh, from my uh, recollections uh, all the way back. She had a ton of en energy. Uh, there was a, a story that uh, took me to Penticton, and and it wasn't even uh, um, a second guess. Uh, you know, some some tragedy had happened, and it was. I was. I remember walking to work, uh, hit, getting on the bus, and I got a call from her saying, "No, nope, you got to be at the airport." You know, and it was it was that kind of energy, and there was no, can we afford it or anything like that. And uh, I thought, okay, uh, this is a, a go get it uh, kind of organization I just joined, and so. I loved it. I loved it right from the start. Yeah, she had a really interesting point of view too, because I mean, like she she'd come over to us from Vision TV, and um, she was actually uh, a black American woman who had grown up in Texas at a time when the schools were segregated, mm -hmm. and uh, she'd wanted to be an actress, and they wouldn't let her into school with the white kids, mm -hmm. and so her mom wrote a letter, and she got into theater. She also got into journalism, and uh, I felt like she had, I, I don't know for you, but I felt like she had like a really powerful uh, influence over the newsroom. Sometimes having that view from outside was helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, uh, I was going to ask you what, what you thought, that, um, how much she changed the crew, because coming on, you were a reporter at the time, a VJ at the time, and that, uh, that group of, um, this is a much smaller group than we have now, and it was yeah. like... Uh, it just seemed like a real badass little group of, you know, band <laughs> of rebels kind of <laughs> kind of feel to it, and uh, I wonder where that uh, that that came from. I really uh, I really appreciated the fact that we all kind of believed in the same thing and were pushing the same way. And um, was that was that from Dan or or what do you? You know, I I think that that was from Dan. Mm -hmm. Dan had really set it up that um, we were outside the system that. You know, when APTN started, um, it, they, the cable companies didn't want to carry us. And so, like in the 24 
Channel Universe, which it was at the time, they put us up on Channel 72, and um, they didn't like that we were must carry. They didn't like that ABTN was being shoved down their throat. Um, and, you know, Dan was uh, starting up the newsroom. He was kind of handpicking people to come in. I, I wasn't one of his handpicks. I snuck in <laughs> on the side. Um, but, you know, like he had this vision for what news could be. And he said, like, it's got to be different. It's got to be challenging. And um, we've got to take on our own people sometimes. We've, he didn't want to cover government, like federal government, for the first year because he wanted us really to focus on the communities and things that were happening that mm -hmm. were important to people back home. So he had all these like really different ideas. Um, we talk about there being like a bit of a, a cult of Dan David and he hates it when <laughs> I say that. Um, and then, you know, like when Rita came on, um, Rita was really good at organizing. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the, the big difference that, that she made is that she was very organized and she would be here like 12 hours a day and uh, well, I found her to be very fiery too. And, yeah. And, and I kind of, I kind of fed off that, you know, like, like I, like I was saying earlier, just the know you're getting there today, mm -hmm. uh, and there was no doubt about it. And uh, yeah, that kind of set the template for for mine and Shirley's uh, next next little bit at in the BC bureau. It, BC is a pretty interesting place. Um, uh, it's been kind of the the center of a lot of major stories. Um, uh, so we were kind of, kind of thrust into the, <laughs> the you know, on top story every night almost for, like right away, and it was a baptism by fire for sure. Yeah, can you you remember some of the big stories that she covered? Some of them? well, uh, certainly uh, um, being on the uh, the ground floor with uh, the the Frank Paul inquiry and the Frank Paul incident, um, and uh, the, the the Picton. All uh, the missing murdered women. Yeah, all, yeah. yeah uh, Highway of Tears, which is something Shirley was on, uh, like in the early 2000s. So she brought that over to APTN, and uh, yeah, just a, a, a lot of stuff that's become high profile. It's a lot of stuff that wasn't being talked about, hearing about missing and murdered Indigenous women, you know, in uh, being mentioned in the uh, uh, you know Parliament, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. uh, when nobody talked about it uh, in the early 2000s was was something that arc uh, was was something amazing to to witness to to see the inte the attention uh, that finally led to a uh, the, the inquiry so yeah because I, I I remember how that story kind of got into the mainstream it was because um, I the Vancouver Sun uh, some reporters convinced their editors that uh, there there was something going on and they came out with that um, famous uh, front page where it had all the faces of missing women. Mm -hmm. But that was, that was the first mainstream. It had been covered by Indigenous News for a while. Uh, Barnsley thinks he was covering it back like years mm -hmm. ago, like, like before there was an APTN, I yeah. think. Um, yeah, my boss is pretty funny, funny that way. Whenever you start researching mm -hmm. uh, stuff, you know, his bylines come up on like, almost <laughs> every subject. Where, anyways, yeah. Well, yeah, he, was, so he, he, he had was that there. space all to himself yeah. for like a lot of years. Yes. Like, nobody was, was doing that work. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I mean, uh, BC was was moving. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, I, I asked you at one point. I said um, I wanted to know if you'd go into investigates, and I said, could you, would you think of going into investigates? And maybe I asked you and Cullen. Cullen and I were talking about this earlier. Mm -hmm. Through the magic of TV, these interviews were they're apart, but uh, we're doing them on the same day. Mm -hmm. um, and I said, you know, if you don't like it, you can you can go back in a year, like, and go back to Daily News. Mm -hmm. So uh, you must have liked investigates. I love I love investigates. I love the the freedom for the the longer form. Uh, um, uh, um, I guess we're calling them documentaries uh, uh, now. Um, there is something to be said with that daily. I kind of got addicted to the daily uh, mm -hmm. um, deadline, and it was exciting. <laughs> I was talking with another colleague, Trina, last night about that. That uh, you know. There's good stress and bad stress. It's all bad stress until, you know, one minute after deadline. Yeah. <laughs> yeah then it felt great, you know, and then you're ready to do it again the next day. And, uh, yeah, so I... I, I, I never I, thought I, of our careers <laughs> as a cycle of daily abuse, but yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of gone. It's a, it's a whole new... Uh, you're not looking at, uh, you know, um, you're not looking at the second hand on the clock now. You're looking at, you know, the, the calendar and, you know, those deadlines come up pretty quick too when you're, mm -hmm. when you're, when you're looking at the deadline. But, uh, 
it's it's getting me to spread my wings in terms of you know covering the country now. Um, it's uh, uh, I'm experiencing a, a, you know a whole well, I've been experiencing for the past four or five years now just this whole new almost a new world of uh, 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 of people I've met and um, sources and all that building build, building new sources and getting out of my comfort zone of all the people I know in BC um, and uh, doing some I think some pretty decent stories so. It's been a lot. It's been a lot of fun. Well, and, and one of the reasons I wanted you and Cullen to uh, try out investigates is I, I mean I felt like uh, you'd be a good fit, but investigates was struggling with the visuals mm -hmm. at the time. You know, uh, Todd had a background in TV, but everybody else they were great investigative reporters, both in print. Mm -hmm. So, so I kind of put you in there because I felt like um, it would help that along. I. I, I do you want to take some credit? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, well, maybe you know, like I know my my stuff. Uh, it, it just seems natural to to do. I, I know I bring up the the idea, and even in our pitch sessions this week, you know, you got to ask the question. That's a that's a great lead, but what are the visuals? You know, how how are we going to tell this story uh, um, um, with some visual flair? And <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, and and realizing that uh, you're not just getting. Um, B-roll. I mean, visuals can be the story itself, you know. So, taking that into uh, any production is important, you know. As as important as digging those documents up, and so we've got that side covered, you know, hardcore, long-term investigative journalism, and uh, so, uh, you know, this <laughs> sens the sens sens sensitive artist types on this side with the. <laughs> with the artistic vision, you know, so, uh, they kind of, we kind of, kind of have come together and made a good looking, great, awesome show, so. Yeah, well, no, and uh, you, you were always good at this because in news uh, or investigates, like you could really see like the, the Rob story, you're very creative with the camera. Um, you know, like you, you have a way of thinking about, like you're seeing the story as it happens. Um, and it, it's really interesting to watch your stuff because you know, I think um, there's a lot of times where uh, reporters will say, well, there's no, there's no visuals to get, or it's something that happened, and somehow you never have, um, you know, just file footage in your pieces. You always find a way to write around or to, to get those visuals in there. Yeah, um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, there's always a way to use the, uh, um, you know, it's, it's, it's story selection too. You know, you've got to make sure that the story you choose to do has um, a, a visual element to it. And when you're in the field or, you know, um, at getting, getting that uh, accompanying shot is just as important as getting the, the interview. So you've got to go out there with that in mind too. Uh, it's what I was trained actually to do. I was trained to be a, 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 a camera op and that's where my base um, knowledge in this business comes from my bedrock knowledge and uh, that show in the Yukon um, uh, we had great great camera ops um, indigenous guys guys I went to school with but they're in there a couple years before me taught me how to shoot and uh, I still have their teachings in my head I still hear their voices <laughs> whenever I'm shooting and you know uh, it's uh, it's because of that uh, that I think I feel comfortable out there. It's second nature. It's, you know, it's it's something I don't even think about. And the show that I think we're here to talk about reminded me so much when I was shooting there of my roots up in the Yukon because mm -hmm. we were out on the land. We were shooting, um, you know, a trap line, and that was just so natural to me. And um, you know, it was all in the effort of telling telling this important story about a pipeline blockade, <clears throat> but the actual Viz was telling a story too about, you know, why they were actually doing uh, the blockade in the first place. They were protecting a way of life and, you know, being out there in the wilderness and, you know, taking the day to get out there on the back of a <laughs> skidoo with my camera was just old school um, shooting that, that I loved. And I think I came across in the piece, so. Yeah, and so um, let, let's move on and talk about the piece, but I just okay. want to say before we do that um, it's important for, like we get a lot of um, people who want to work at APTN and they sometimes think, 
like they see the job postings and they think, well, maybe I can't do that because I don't quite have all the skills. And it, it's so great to talk to somebody who started out as a cameraman, picked up the journalism, is now an investigative reporter. Mm -hmm. You know, so if anybody is out there and you've got camera skills, you too can be an investigative reporter yeah, like Rob after a short time at APTN. Yes, <laughs> of course, of course. Like, uh, um, especially with an organization like uh, the ones that I've gone through, including this one, the, the opportunity to, to push yourself and push your skills and um, uh, is always has always been there. There's never been any roadblocks or no, 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 you can't do that. So, um, yeah, anybody who thinks they're just a sensitive artist, artist type, <laughs> come on, <laughs> come on, come on, Some challenge yourself. Make the best push, investigative reporters. Push yourself. So. So, so let's talk about your documentary, Defiance. Okay. You, you gave a little bit of a lead in there. Tell me more about it. Okay, so I think the reason we did it, um, there was, there was uh, some reports coming out, investigation by uh, um, the RCMP stating that, you know, there are these uh, protest groups that were security risks and, and there were protesters and, you know, uh, should they send, uh, uh, you know, are they a security threat and all that. And I'd... Uh, been talking with uh, Frida for a while, and um, we, in news, I think even we had started doing some stories about it, and we just at that point thought, okay, this is time to go up there and and show the world who, who these, what this big threat threat is, yeah. and uh, we, so we meet Frida, who's like all of five foot two, and you know she's, you know, um, making medicine in the kitchen and takes me out on the trap line and and uh, was just living a, a traditional life, which was new to her too, which was uh, surprising. It was an active uh, example of decolonization um, for her to go out there late in life. And she had uh, built, a, built a house right on the um, GPS coordinates of this uh, shell pipeline that was being proposed. And that just took a lot of, you know. That, that was a badass thing to do. Yeah. 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 So. Uh, we always hear about decolonization and decolonize yourself and what does that mean and uh, how do you do that in the modern modern world? Well, this is an example and she's she was uh, definitely fiery and she's definitely, you know, had uh, had it out between, you know, other journalists and and she's got a point of view and um, but, you know, she's also just somebody who make medicine in the kitchen and that our show was able to show a little slice of her life. And, and this heated up um, uh, recently, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, I, I, one of the things was that uh, when, when it was heating up, there was a lot of mentions on uh, social media that um, oh, APTN like has been covering this like for um, two years now mm -hmm. because they were going back to to your documentary and we we put it back up in front. Mm -hmm. But maybe you want to talk a little bit about um, how this has resolved itself. Oh, now? Yeah. I don't think it's, I don't think well, it's, it's over. Not, it's not over, but... <laughs> so, um, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't involved in, in, in what was, you know, could have uh, become another real flashpoint. Um, uh, and it, uh, there, there is still the, the, the threat out there that, um, that home, <laughs> that okay. camp uh, community word I'm looking for that little community uh, could be could be moved out of the way of of um, uh, this this pipeline you know uh, I think it's another pipeline at this point but um, that's a that's an open-ended story at this point I, I don't think uh, I don't think uh, the chiefs up there the the editor chiefs are ready to give give that one up yet and pack it in so yeah, something to keep an eye on as a little aside, yeah, that was the one too that um, has led to us looking to fight um, injunctions because mm. they are using injunctions and a public safety clause to keep journalists away when police move in, which is not really a safe thing for Indigenous people when they take on the Crown. We've seen a lot of bad stuff happen, so um, yeah, was... we weren't able to challenge that one because it happened in the moment, mm -hmm. but we're looking for an injunction we can challenge so we can get up and close. Mm -hmm. Well, that's that's a that's a positive move because our our eyes have to be there, our, our cameras got to be there, and we got to be able to tell that story for sure.
Okay. Well, I want to thank you for telling that story, and okay. I want to thank you for talking to me today. Wow, we're done already? We're Excellent. done already. It goes so fast. <laughs> right Thanks, Karen. Uh, thank you, Rob.